Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and this is the third and final part of the mini-series in which I show you how I built the largest building in Chandwell station. I wanted a small war memorial outside the station and I decided to base one on the one in Easingwold in North Yorkshire. It's a simple obelisk structure and has one side for each of the two world wars. It didn't take me long to realise that this thing was going to be small. I created the front and back face in Inkscape and then another shape to represent the outer edge which is just half a millimetre wide. I cut out the inner part of the outer edge to leave a little window. I cut out the main face of the memorial and mounted it behind the window once the glue was completely dry, I then cut out the whole thing through both layers of card and this left me with a face with a delicate half millimetre border. I used two pieces as the sides. These were 2.3 millimetres at the bottom and only 1.4 millimetres wide at the top. I gently put them together using PVA and my tweezers and I was left with a monolith of about the right proportions. I covered the sides with a piece of the stone texture paper to cover the joins. I made the base out of four squares of cereal packet and then two plinths, each made from two layers of one millimetre card. I decided to wrap these along four edges with a strip of stone paper. On one, I decided to write the inscriptions. I based these inscriptions on the prototype, but this text is only 0.4 millimetres high. I stuck the strip onto one edge of the plinth, making sure that I got the text central to the face and then wrapped the other three edges around it. It was so small I could hardly hold it, but I was pleased with how it turned out. The camera can even make out the text, even if my eyes can't. I created a little cap out of folded card and glued this to the top of the monument. In place, I think it's a nice little addition to the front of the station and it fills an otherwise unused space. And I think it makes sense that the town would raise a monument to the Chandwell-based railway workers who gave their lives in the wars. No ground is flat in Chandwell and Station Road is no different. It rises from the High Street, past the retaining wall and then continues rising right across the station front. The floor is at platform height, so the ground drops 10mm to the left and rises 10mm to the right. I started by placing 25 parallel lines equally spaced along the front of the station. I printed this and glued it to the baseboard with glue stick. Next, I moved to Inkscape. I drew the profile I wanted the ground to take at the front edge of the layout. Next, I worked out what the ground would need to do along the station walls. The three doors are all at the same height and I only wanted to have a step at the far left door. So the ground here needed to be a bit more level than at the front of the layout. I arranged all of this information onto a kind of grid and I worked out the height in millimetres that the ground would be across each of the 25 guidelines. I used those measurements to draw the profile of 25 individual ribs one for each of the guidelines on the baseboard. I had to remember to lower them by enough to represent the surface of the ground. I was left with ribs to cut out individually from one millimeter card, which I then stuck to the guidelines on the baseboard. When they were in place, I could already tell that the ground was going to be subtle, but effective. When I dropped on an off cut of half millimeter card, I was really excited that the effect was going to work. I used Uhu on top of each spine and then dropped a pre-cut piece of card on top to represent the ground. I used half millimetre card as it's easy to cut to shape and is flexible enough to easily follow the contours of the ground without needing to be scored. In the van yard, I wanted the ground to gradually fall from street level to platform level. This was a drop of about two millimetres at its highest point. I just stuck strips of one and half millimetre card in a random pattern to roughly create the base of the ground. I then just stuck cobble texture directly onto this base. When pushed into place on the card base, it follows the lay of the ground perfectly. It's an incredibly subtle effect, and it's one that the camera doesn't really pick up too well, but to the naked eye, the effect is astonishing, and I was really pleased with the result. I added a small wall to separate the van yard from the station concourse, because I wanted there to be steps from street height to concourse height underneath the main entrance arch. I needed to make sure that the ground matched the floor of the van yard exactly, so I raised up the edges with card strips. Once the road was on top, 
this should hopefully create a perfect join. I did the same around the entrance to Tim's cars. So I just built up the ground with offcuts of half millimetre card. Once the next layer of card is in place, the ground should flow perfectly. I drew the shape for the road in Inkscape and drew some road markings using the simple line tools. I found an extract from an official document that determined the positions and spacing of the taxi markings, but I only used this as a guide. I just plonked them somewhere that looked good enough. I printed the road surface and stuck it to pre-cut half millimetre card. I trimmed off the overlapping edges to match the shape of the card that I glued it onto. Once this was in place, the building was starting to feel like a transformation. I've got a smudge of orange fountain pen ink on the tarmac, but I decided to live with it as it's not too obviously noticeable as a mistake. I was pleased that the double yellow lines, based on those at Darlington, lined up properly with the vanyard arches. I used a similar technique for the footpath. I mounted a print of the path shape onto card that was pre-cut to the building contour and then covered this with the pavement texture. I used a stack of 1mm card to make steps from the path down into the station concourse. I painted these a simple grey as they are unlikely to ever be seen. In this shot, you can see how the steps descend beside the wall that separates the vanyard with its own gradually falling surface. I created a card template to test that I had the hipped roof shape correct for the vanyard. I wanted three identical roofs side by side. I used a simple method for working out the shapes that needed no maths or anything more complicated than a ruler. I made a video of this technique and I've linked to it at the end of this video. I stuck the parts of the template together with sticky tape and it was immediately obvious that it was the right shape and size for the vanyard. I printed the roofs out for real onto the same inkjet acetate as I used for the main station canopy. I fixed the four parts of the roofs together using strips of rivet effect paper that were colour matched to the paint that I used for the main station canopy girders. I used normal PVA and I worked methodically around the roof. I used a clamp to hold the pieces together while I worked. The end result was the right shape but it bent and bulged and I wondered if I'd have to find another technique. Once on top of the vanyard though and squeezed in beside each other they became much more rigid. I cut a notch out of the one on the left to fit around the tower and then used weights on top to hold them in place while the glue dried. I varnished them to take off the unnatural plastic looking shine and now I have a very solid translucent roof which looks wonderful when it is letting light through to the vanyard and concourse below. To create the front canopy I simply cut a strip of printed acetate to the right dimensions. I created brackets in Inkscape, simple triangles with a curved underside. I thought that it was unlikely that they would ever be seen but I added some circle decoration anyway. Cut them, glued them back to back and stuck them at regular intervals along the canopy in such a place as to be halfway between every other window. I made a valance out of the same cladding texture that I used on the main canopy and this helped keep everything together as the glue dried. I mixed some paint of a matching shade of blue and I painted the exposed card edges. The canopy was surprisingly solid once I had finished it. I did a test fit which worked and then I just used beads of Uhu on the edges of the brackets and mounted it directly against the building. I dotted about some scale scenes posters to give the station some signs of life. I added some white metal P&D marsh chimney pots. They're a bit wonky as ever but that's becoming a signature of mine I think. I cut slivers of cereal packet coloured black with a sharpie to represent downspouts. I was going to run them down the centre of these wall sections but I'd already mounted the posters. Whoops! It almost looks intentional that they run down the side like this instead. I had a similar issue with the ones on the front where I had canopy brackets in the way so these are offset slightly too. My friend Tim suggested that a suitably naff thing for the Visit Chandwell Tourist Board to be peddling would be a Chandwell Ghost Tour so there's a little air board advertising just that. The BR signs were printed directly onto white photo paper, roughly cut out and stuck to more of the same paper up to four layers deep. The whole thing was then cut out and the pure white edges coloured in with a child's felt tip pen. I mounted them at this position on the tower which seems to be where the originals were mounted on the Darlington Tower which so inspired me. I 
I've loved every minute of this station build. It was January when I completed the platforms and it's all I've worked on since then. My attention is now turning to the building on the back scene behind the station. My current thinking is a tired hotel of faded Victorian splendour. I've been very much inspired by the Midland Hotel at the entrance to Bradford Forster Square, so watch out for some videos on the building of that. I'm taking a different approach to this build, where I will post regular short updates so that I can give a bit more insight into my thought process as I proceed with the scratch build. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing to my channel. In the meantime, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.